Hi everyone, and welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSpring tips and tricks, and examine client case studies. I'm Alice Shaw, an e-learning expert at iSpring, and I will be presenting for you today. We've been on the market about 20 years. We've been creating top quality products on e-learning and online training, and we have a long history of trust with our customers all across the world. And today we are going to cover a very interesting topic. We will talk about how to create quality training content that won't bust your budget. Okay, let's get started. So why did I decide to focus on the content creation process in today's session? Because I know it can really be challenging and time and money consuming for many RTOs. However, this process does not have to be overwhelming, overcomplicated, and much too expensive. For many RTOs I work with, we were able to find a solution that fit their needs. Moreover, they are now able to create effective and interactive content with the results that are easy to track, hassle-free. So let's move on to the challenges that RTOs faces in the content creation process. First, let's talk about time and money consuming challenges. There are three cases that I would like to cover. The first one is when an RTO uses third party services for content creation. This can cost you a lot of money because they create content once and you pay for it, but anytime you need to update your content, you'll need to pay for each update. The second challenge is that the process of tracking results is not automated. Most of the time, RTOs track results manually, which is very time consuming. The third challenge is the fear of the new and unknown, which can really keep the process from moving forward. You can detect this challenge when you have lots of what-if questions, like what if the tool does not work for us? What if I spend too much money and the outcome is not satisfactory? What if we spend too much time learning the new tool and there are other tools that, that work great and are less complicated? And many others. So now let's move on to the next big group of challenges and all of them are about effective learning outcomes. The first one is in this group is when you present your training materials as documents, PDFs, and PowerPoint presentations. But what's wrong with that? Well, nothing if you don't want your learners to retain the content. It's a well-known fact, and I believe that Julie Dirkinson Dirksen, sorry, was talking about it lately, that in order to learn something, reading is not sufficient. To make content stick, you need to offer your learner the option to interact with it. And there are lots of ways you can do that, but we will talk about that later. And that brings us to the next challenge, which is to be able to create competitive content. Let's face it, we all want our service to stand out, and it's really hard to achieve that through plain docs and presentations. You want your content to receive the highest traits from your learners, don't you? And the last challenge here is when an RTO already has an LMS with a built-in tool for content creation, which is awesome because it makes the training process easier compared to the old-fashioned way. However, as far as content creation is concerned, most of these built-in tools have limited functionality, which can result in low learning outcomes. All of these challenges can be addressed with an authoring tool that is perfect for your needs. So let me go ahead and jump to the how part right away. So there are three top authoring tools on the market. Articulate 360, Adobe Captivate, and iSpring Suite Max. Each of these tools is well suited for a particular type of scenario. 
One solution will work for you when it's necessary to launch a lot of e-learning content immediately, while others provide a complex and detailed foundation for authoring. So on our website, we have a detailed review article that you can go ahead and check out. Let me share the link in the comment section. So now let's see how iSpring can help you with each challenge. So the first challenge is when an RTO uses third party services for content creation. With iSpring, you have your own authoring tool like iSpring Suite that allows you to create your training materials in house without going to third party services. Having your own authoring tool enables you to tailor courses with all your own content. They are more in tune with users and therefore more readily accepted. And anytime you need to update your content, you can quickly do that yourself without spending additional fees for such services and wasting your time on back and forth reviewing. The second challenge is when the process of tracking results is not automated. Well, iSpring comes with a built-in quiz maker that allows you to create interactive assessments where points are assigned automatically, so you don't have to assess them manually. Another great feature of QuizMaker is that reports can be easily sent to, your, to you or your students uh, via email. The third challenge was about fear of the new and unknown that can stop the process from moving forward. Remember, it's that challenge where we asked, we asked lots of what if questions. Here, I'd like to talk about our clients and why they choose iSpring. What our clients love most about iSpring Suite is the fact that it's a PowerPoint add-in which makes it super easy to use. Because if you know how to use PowerPoint, you'll know how to use iSpring. iSpring is well known for having a zero learning curve and you can create training content with no IT or design experience, thanks to built-in content library. Top review websites for e-learning such as Captera, GT, and e-learning industry have lots of reviews for iSpring tools, so you can go ahead and check them out. We also have award-winning technical support available 24-7 via chat and email. Our specialists are always happy to help. And webinar series that are free to watch can also save you time and address some of the questions you may have when choosing an authoring tool. So now let's see what iSpring has to offer in terms of effective learning outcomes. The first challenge was when you present your training materials as documents, PDFs, and PowerPoint presentations, which is not that engaging and doesn't help when learning the material. With iSpring Suite, you can create or supercharge your presentations with interactive elements like quizzes, interactions, role plays, and screencasts. That will help you engage your students in the learning process and increase their attention and also focus on the material that they have to study, which will result in better content retention. The second challenge is when you need to be able to create competitive content. Well, according to our client's experience with the outstanding features available in iSpring, they were able to build a variety of contents that their students would prefer over other learning materials. Even though it's super easy to build, the outcome looks extremely professional. And the third challenge is when a built-in tool has limited functionality. Even if you have an LMS, you can still complement it with iSpring Suite and leverage all the options available. If you are not sure if iSpring will work with your LMS, please don't worry. We constantly test LMSs that are out there on the market to make sure our tool is compatible. We even have a list on our website that, are, that already has over 150 LMSs that are compatible. 
So now let's let me show you the tool iSpring Suite in action. So I'm going to focus on building a course in iSpring Suite Max. Uh, I want to start with you from scratch to show to show you how quickly you can create an engaging course with video, interaction, and a small quiz in iSpring Suite Max. And then I will show you how to upload our course to iSpring Space and, of course, demonstrate how to share the course with your team. So great, I'm excited to switch to the practical part now and create a course together with you. So we will be working on a course on a vital topic fire safety. So before we move, uh, before we move on to practice, let me show you how the course built in iSpring Suite will look. So I pre-uploaded a course, the course to iSpring Learn LMS, and we will take a look at it from the learner's perspective. So now I am in my user account and let's imagine I'm a new employee and as a part of my onboarding program I have to take the training on fire safety. Let's open it. So I see that this course has been assigned to me. So now I will click, click on it to show you how it will look on the user's end. So here you can see the interactive player that I can use to navigate through the course. Here's a YouTube video embedded right in my course. And there is also an interaction that helps me learn about different types of fire extinguishers. And lastly, there is a quiz to check my knowledge. Looks great. Okay, I have completed this course in the LMS. And if you would like to learn more about iSpring Learn LMS, we have a dedicated webinar on that topic. So let us know in the chat box and we will share the link with you after the session. So now let's build in this course in iSpring Suite Max. So I will close this window now and we'll go back to PowerPoint. Let me open a new file here. Great. To start working in iSpring Suite Max, I need to activate my subscription by logging into my iSpring Space account. This will give me an opportunity to collaborate with my colleagues and get full access to iSpring Suite and content library. So to do that, I will just click on login icon here in iSpring Suite tab and a window will open and prompt me to sign in. So after I click on login with iSpring Space, a new browser page will appear. Here I need to insert my iSpring Space credentials and we'll sign in. Great, now let's go back to PowerPoint. And let's get to the course creation. So to make my course more engaging, I will start by adding templates, characters, and their surroundings. Luckily, I don't have to search for all of these online or bother a designer because I can find all of them in content library, which is a part of iSpring Suite Max. So let's start with templates. So when you open slide templates, you can find plenty of templates um, here. When you open slide templates, you can find plenty of templates. For example, urban style, orbital, light, architecture, workspace, and many others. 
Each template has ready-made slides on different parts of, the, of a course, such as main menu, video, process, quote, and others. So let's choose course title for the first slide. And to add it, I will click on insert. Let's delete the first slide. Now I will change a picture. I will right click, choose change picture, and find the right image. To save time, I've already mm, created a resource folder with all the pictures and text file. And now I will copy, I will choose the background image here. And we'll just copy and paste uh, the title and description from my, from my pre-created document. Okay, so our title page looks great. So now I will create a new slide. I will go to insert button and choose new slide. In my course, I will create a step-by-step -step plan on what to do in case of fire emergency. And to introduce my learner to the topic, I want to share an instructional video. So I will start by adding a background. I'll simply go back to iSpring Suite choose content library and we'll click on backgrounds. Let's select the office pictures and I'm going to choose, let me see, this one. Great, to make it less bright, I will create a white transparent shape. To do that, I will go to Insert tab, choose Shapes, and I will click on Rectangles. Now I will go to the Quick Styles, and we'll choose Transparent one. And the last step is to change the color to white. So I will go to Shape Fill, choose More Fill Colors, and we'll select white. And I'm going to set up the transparency, 32%. Great. Next, I will add the video itself. There are different ways to add a video to your course in iSpring Suite. You can create a new video. You can insert it from your computer. You can record your screen or you can uh, add a YouTube video or even insert video through the web object feature. In my case, a YouTube video would work best. So I will click right here and just enter the link to this video from YouTube. I will just copy and paste it. And let's preview this video to make sure everything works great. Okay, now I will click OK and add this video to my slide. Now I'm going to resize it a bit so that it will fit our slide better and put it right here. Great, let's make our course even more interactive. To do that, I will add a character. To find the best character, I'm going to go to Content Library and choose Characters. iSpring Content Library has a diverse selection of characters that represent different ethnicities, occupations, actions, and even emotions. We constantly update Content Library and we are always happy to hear your suggestions. I would definitely encourage you to use characters in your courses simply because it creates an emotional connection between the learner and the content and involves them more in the training process. 
for my course i obviously need a firefighter so to find this character i will select industrial in clothing and let's choose win set i want him to be pointing at our video so let's select this one and let's add it to our slide let's move him a bit and resize it and now i'm going to crop it a bit so that it will it will fit our slide better okay great so now i want to add a word bubble with a video description to add a word bubble i will move to the powerpoint insert tab and then choose shapes and we'll choose callouts this one put it right here and move the end to my character. I will change the design for something natural like this one. And we'll just copy and paste the description from my pre-created document. Great, this slide is ready. So after my learners watch the video, I want them to better memorize the steps on how to act in case of a fire emergency. There is a total of five steps, but to save time, I will only create the slide with step one, analyze the situation, because other steps have the same exact structure. So now I will use another template for this slide. I will go back to the iSpring content library select slide templates right i will use the same set of templates but this time i will choose um let me see company mission i will add it So now I want to change the background to our office picture. So I will slightly move the overlay layer to delete the background. Okay, so now I will go back to the content library choose backgrounds and we'll find my office picture. Let me see this one and let's add it. So the last step is right click and send it to back. And now I will move back the overlay layer. Looks great. So now I'm ready to add my text. I will copy and paste my step one. I will paste it instead of the title here. And now I'm going to add the text itself. I'll put it right here. And now I will format this text and will add a sign to visual visualize the step. So first I'm going to change the text to bullet points. So I'm going to go to the home tab first and we'll choose bullets. Great. So 
it looks almost perfect, but I think that this quotation mark uh, does not look good for this topic. So I am going to delete it now. And instead, I will go back to content library and choose icons. I will select different symbol here. Let's choose this one. Let's move it right here. And now I'm going to change the color. So I will go to Home tab and choose Shape Fill. I will change it to red. Great, our slide is ready now. Let's jump in to creating an interaction. So another key, comp another key component of the fire safety training is learning what types of firefighting appliances there are and how you should use them. To help my learners with that, I will add an interaction with various types of fire extinguish extinguishers. To save time, I will duplicate the last slide. And we'll just paste, copy and paste another title here. And we'll change the description. So this time I will move the text box to the side and will resize it. I will move it right here and also will move the text itself. And I also want to bring I also want to bring in our character Win Sandbag. So I will go to content library, click on characters, and we'll choose Win Sand. But this time I want him to be holding a fire extinguisher. And let's add it to our slide. So now I am going to just resize it a bit and also crop so that it will fit our slide better. Okay, great. So this slide is ready as well and now I'm ready to add our interaction. To add it, I will need to insert new slide here. And now I will go back to iSpring Suite tab and choose Interaction. As you can see, iSpring Suite has 12 types of interactions for use in a huge variety of training situations. With these interactive templates, you can present your training content and engage your learners. For example, interactions will help you show, show the history of your company, your product details, and an interactive pie chart with your data. For my course, I will choose steps. You can start by adding introduction and summary slides. To save time, I will just copy my steps and a short description. And a short, let, let's add a short description. Okay. 
and I also want to add pictures from my pre-made content folder. So to do that, I will go to the insert tab and choose picture from my resource folder. Let's add this one. And I will put it like this. Yeah, looks great. Let's go to the next step. I will repeat the same for my next steps. Okay, and let's add a picture now. Let's change text dropping. Great. And the last step. Short description. And let's add a picture here. Let's change the text dropping. Great. Our steps are ready. So it's super easy to do, right? So when you when your interaction is done, you can preview it by clicking preview button. So you can navigate through the interaction using the player navigation buttons or by clicking the interaction buttons itself. Plus, you can see how the interaction will look on different devices like desktops, tablets, and smartphones. And if something doesn't look right, you can easily fix it prior to publishing. It saves so much time. And actually, I think that the blue color doesn't match my overall course design, so I'm going to change that. So I will close, close preview window and we'll go to colors. I will change it to red. Okay, it looks much better now. So let's save it and save our interaction and return to course. So now our step-by-step step step guide is ready. I think my course looks great, and now I want to add a quiz to check my learner's knowledge. To create a quiz, I need to add a new slide. So I will go to Insert and choose New Slide. So now I will go back to iSpring Suite tab and choose quiz. So you can choose between graded quiz and survey questions. I will choose a graded quiz for my course. And first, I want to show you questions tab. You can see 14 different types of questions like multiple choice, multiple response, drag the words, hotspot, and my favorite drag and drop. It gives you almost unlimited possibilities for creating effective and pleasant looking assessments. And it's super easy. So you can switch between forum view and slide view. Use the forum view to quickly enter the question and answer text and slide view for changing the appearance of the slide. And if you would like to learn more about iSpring Quizmaker, you're welcome to watch two webinars on how to work in iSpring Quizmaker like a pro on our YouTube channel. So for my first question, I will choose sequence. So let's go back to insert and choose sequence. So in the slide view, I'm going to add the question text. Let's 
right here. I will just copy and paste it again. And also I will add a background picture. To do that, I will go again to insert and choose backgrounds. This time I'm going to choose the meeting room. So let me see. I'm going to choose this one and let's add it. And now I also would like to create a shape for the text to make it more visible. So I will click on shape right here and choose rectangle. Now I'm going to change the design and we'll bring our text to front. Great. To add my answers, I will switch to the form view now. I will just copy and paste my answers here in the correct order. And the last one. So the order in which you type in your options will be considered as the correct one. On the right side, we have slide options that you can use to change quiz settings. At the bottom of the page, you can easily change the feedback for both correct and incorrect answers. So my next question will be a hotspot. So let's add this question. So now I will add the question text. So I will copy and paste it. I will ask my learners to identify the fire safety rules violations. So in the form view, I will add another image from the resource folder. I will choose this one. And in my case, the boxes on this image close to the emergency exit. So let's create a hotspot over this area, which will be our correct answer. So I'm going to choose oval and the shape over the boxes right here. And now I will go back to slide view to ensure that everything looks good. So now I'm going to resize our background picture. And I will send it to back. And also I would like to add a shape and change the format text, right? So I will go to insert and choose rectangle. I will make it white and we'll bring our text to front. Great, our question is ready. And the last one will be a drag and drop question. With this question type, your creative possibilities are almost unlimited. Still in the sli slide view, I will go back to insert tab. We'll click on question tab, questions tab and choose drag and drop. Now I will add another office background. I will click on backgrounds and we'll choose it from our content library. 
and I am going to choose this call center picture. Okay, and now I am going to insert three objects. I will go to insert and choose them from my resource folder. I will go, I will add fire, flowers, and fire extinguisher. And let's resize them. Okay, in the drag and drop options here on the right, I will choose any drop target. And for a snapping type, I will choose stack random. Now I will go back to form view and select the correct match. To do that, I will set flowers and uh, fire extinguisher as drag items and we'll select fire as drop target for for the fire extinguisher the flowers will have no match okay so let's go back to slide view now mm -hmm. and now i am going to add a shape Uh, behind my question. I will go to insert, click on shape, and put it right here. Let's change it to white, and let's bring our question to front. Now for the fun part, let's preview this question to see how it works. Let's select preview, let's click on preview, and let's see this question. Everything looks great. So let's close this preview window and save our quiz. Of course, there is much more you can create using iSpring Suite. And please let us know in the chat box which features you want to learn more about. So we've done a great job and we are ready to publish the course. So you can find the publish button on the iSpring Suite ribbon right here. As you can see, there are several publishing options available. You can just convert your course and save it on your computer. You can also publish the course directly to iSpring Learn, like I did to show you to show it to you in the beginning of our webinar. You can also create SCORM packages, and uh, they are compatible with many LMSs, or even you can publish your course to YouTube. In my case, I am going to publish the course to my iSpring Space account to be able to share it with my colleagues. Okay, so my course is now uploaded to iSpring Space. Okay, so now I will click on Manage Content and my iSpring Space account will open. Here you can see the list of the courses uploaded to the account. Right, so now I want to share the course we just created with my colleagues to see if they have any comments or would like to add something to it. 
so now I to share the course I will click on where it says share make the link public and copy the link so now I can send it via email to my colleagues even those who are not registered to the account and in our next releases they they will also be able to leave their comments on the course okay guys we did a great job today we created a course using iSpring Suite Max with a video interaction and a short test we also uploaded the course into iSpring space and we learned how you can share your courses with your team and learners Plus, this is just one of many examples of what you can achieve with iSpring. And hopefully, now you will be able to kickstart your online training with our solution. So I would like to thank you all, thank, thank all of you for coming today and for spending this hopefully valuable hour with us learning more about how you can create quality training content and that the content creation process is not complicated and expensive as it seems. If you're interested in testing out iSpring Suite, you're more than welcome to do that. You can sign up for a free trial on our website. So I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you for joining this webinar and we will see you at the next session.